In the previous lecture, we talked about sensors and instrumentation that we use to monitor physiochemical properties. In this lecture, we're all going to look at biomass. So what are ways to determine biomass? Uh, also particularly looking at microorganisms, but more importantly, how can we determine their viability to so whether these microorganisms are alive? The simplest way, if you think of it, to uh, measure biomass is literally to take a sample, to dry it, which obviously costs a lot of energy, and to weigh it. The disadvantage is that in your bioreactor, you've got lots of other solid particles. So what's the most common way of doing this in the reactor? Well, when looking at it in the reactor, we uh, use optical density. So you look at a particular wavelength, often around 600 nanometer, and this would give you an indication by measuring the turbidity, how much uh, cells you've actually got. If we are looking at lower bacterial concentrations, so think of, for instance, when you go to the hospital and people want to check whether you have an infection, it does require cell culturing. So it means you take a sample, you would often have to wait one or two days and then you kind of get the result. So, so bear in mind, it does vary quite a bit whether you're looking at your reactor or whether we're looking at like infections, like for instance, in a hospital setting. But sometimes you can afford to wait, uh, particularly in bioreactors when the processes are quite slow. So it can be that you can wait a, a day to culture and then you might get information about whether, for instance, you have some recombinant strains uh, or mutated strains in your reactor. Now, the cell viability then is very, uh, it's, it's a different matter. So whether, first of all, whether your cells are alive, but also you're particularly interested in whether uh, the cells that you've got are actually producing the protein that you want. Now, looking at criteria for whether cells are alive, uh, the most common one is actually looking at the cell membrane. So most of these bacteria have got a protective layer around them, the cell membrane, and it's often assumed that once you have the cell membrane that the bacteria are alive. Now here at Newcastle University, they are doing research into this and apparently it doesn't always seem to be the case, but it's kind of one of the most widely accepted definitions. The other things you can look at, and I said this is the most common in bioreactors, is using whether they are producing metabolites, so whether they're producing uh, what you want them to do. And this is uh, monitored with fluorescence spectroscopy. So you use some kind of particular stain, and the stain can detect, so as I said, molecules that indicate uh, or that are related to energy, such as ATP. So this is the most common thing you would actually see. But do bear in mind that obviously when we're working with fluorescence spectroscopy that this is quite expensive equipment. So it might not be standardly available in your bioreactor. You might only look at, for instance, the, the measurements that you get by uh, monitoring the turbidity. So by this stain, for instance, like looking at the color between the red and the green, you can determine whether they are alive or not. The other way of doing it, providing you've got very, very slow growth of cells, is that you might look at the cell culturing, so you might look at a petri dish and see how these cells develop over time. Now this is a bit more of like a niche application, but I do wanted to show it to you because in, the, in Newcastle University they are particularly doing a lot of research into it, and they're looking at what they call L-shaped bacteria. So next you will see a little video on how this works. So they found that the bacteria have certain uh, mechanisms to defend themselves from invaders. And as you might know, most antibiotics, they work on cell membranes. So particularly penicillin would destroy the cell membrane. And it's kind of assumed that the bacteria die after that because they're more vulnerable when they don't have this protective layer. Um, so what can happen is that the bacteria, in order to survive, they kind of slip out of the cell wall. So they go uh, within the cell itself. And there they are more vulnerable, but they do it themselves and they manage to survive that way. Uh, and it's thought that particularly with patients that get recurrent infections and patients that are older, so which immune system is weaker, that this is a way of how bacteria maintain to thrive and how they can resist uh, attack from antibiotics. So if you're working with cell culture in your cells at the university, uh, you have to imagine that these cells, they mutate over time, as we've seen on uh, using continuous operation. And it's not always that common uh, to kind of test what is happening to the cells. What you would normally do when you do standard cell culturing 
you use it for a couple of months and then you dispose of it because you do know that it goes off over time. But there's no really hallmark for cell quality. And what I personally do in my research, I look at mutations in bacteria in terms of in shape. So you can use the shape uh, of the bacteria as a hallmark of the cell quality culture. Now, and what we do see that like I use porous materials, so polymers, that have exactly the same size and shape, so they have cavities, and these cavities have exactly the same size and shape as the bacteria you look at. So if there would be changes in the size and the shape of the bacteria, they're no longer able to bind to the polymer. And you can monitor this over time, and this is actually a very good measure of how you can monitor cell quality. But you could also uh, use it, for instance, to pick up infections in patients. So we studied uh, E. coli, which is a very common infection in Europe. Now, what should you have learned from this mini lecture? So first of all, you need to know methods of how you measure biomass. So as I said before, the simplest is just you take a sample, you dry it and you weigh it. But this wouldn't tell you just what the cells are. It would give you a lot of other interference, other solar particles on the reactor. So it's not the most common way to do it. The easiest way to do this is using turbidity measurements. So it's an optical signal and you can monitor it over time. And if you see they're not growing, then you can use different feedback loops, which we'll go into more in more detail when we go to like the advanced uh, bioinstrumentation control. Now, besides that, uh, we are also very interested in monitoring cell viability. So are they still producing what they want to produce? Now, a, a method of doing this is using a fluorescent spectroscopy. And this is very common as well. And this is combined with a certain type of dye where you can look whether the cells are alive and whether they are dead. And this would give you information about what's happening in your reactor. 